Hello, you all right? Yeah, how are you? Good? I can't seem to wake up. <laughs> I'm not good. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. I, I, I can relate to that. It's uh, a bit crazy here at the moment. Mm. So Laura's Is basically it? started her new job yesterday, a new full-time job. So, um, yeah, it's a case Ooh, of... What's she doing? Uh, she's essentially a, a vet assistant nurse. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, it is it is really good. It is really good for for her back into the animal work that she was doing before, but also for the family because ultimately this yeah. that pool of income that's coming back in again. So um, it's good. It's real good. Mm. But it means happy. but it means mm -hmm. that I am now the uh, primary carer. I'm roles have been reversed in the modern day, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm school drop off dad, mm, yeah. school pick up dad, and yeah. So my my yeah. working day is six yeah. hours. Gone day, gone is, the days. Yeah, yeah. Six hour work. Yeah, got gone of the days where the mums stay at home. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Which is a good thing. It's Equal good opportunities. Thing. That's right. Other than equality of outcome right so equal equality of opportunity is is brilliant but equality of outcome i don't think works do you know what the difference is so equality uh, of opportunity is essentially everyone gets an equal opportunity in a in a role or a sport or whatever equality yeah. of outcome is when laws and legislations put in saying you have to have 50 percent women 50 percent men I don't think that oh, works. Right. Can you imagine, mm. like, mm. oil riggers having fifty percent women on the oil rigs, and fifty percent men actually forced to do that? I don't think that works. Yeah. No. 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 Definitely not. No. Oh, uh, I think I think roles. So there there are particular roles where it works better. Um, with you know like a, a physical ability um to be able to do things you know and yeah. you know people might slate me when i say this but it's, you know, fact, for me, it? it's true fact sometimes men are stronger and more suited for more particular roles you know yeah. compared to women i mean that's why you kind I, of i have, wouldn't be able to do that that's why you see yeah, majority of I wouldn't be able going to, do to stem fields right yeah, yeah, I, I would, I definitely wouldn't be able to do what Steve does. No, um, I, I, I'd never get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it, it takes strength, and yeah. I, you know, I've, I've got no muscles. <laughs> you could get muscles if you went to the gym, right? But ultimately, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah I don't really want to be lucky. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, I might get slated for that what I've just said but well it is um, data and facts don't lie do they no um, no people's perceptions can be different from that data but anyway um, we should have yeah. Sophie on I think soon uh, Claire's not joining I think George is joining too so um, okay uh, yeah have you been following Sophie on the travels? I haven't. I've not. I've been extremely busy, which um I will. Vienna. I will watch the videos back. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Does she has she been reselling out there too? I bet she has. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. No, she's just been taking in the sights and having a good time. Yeah. Why not? Uh, why not? But I, I want to know what her experience was in sleeping in a capsule. In a capsule, she she stayed in this hostel. Yeah, she stayed oh, in this okay. hostel and she slept in a capsule. Oh, I think I feel a bit claustrophobic in one of them. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, different, you know, bizarre experience, and hopefully she's enjoyed it. I'm sure she has. Yeah, she might not join. Um, messages yesterday. She said she's feeling a bit meh, so she probably might not. Oh. 
Okay. Just um, sending a message out to everybody. Are there um, any um, new people, you know, what's perhaps, you know, expressing an interest in joining or? Um, to, be honest, to be honest, I haven't actively kind of messaged people that want to join. I messaged Ricky Resales. Um, and that's mm. the only other person that I've messaged at the moment. I think four or five is a pretty good yeah. number. Um, yeah. We should probably invite some new people, get their their perspe perspective. What's the word? Um, yeah, yeah. I think, I think the more people will join, you know, the more different topics we'll have each week, you know, yeah, fresh, idea, yeah. fresh ideas. And because uh, the, the, the questions I had today, it's literally just made up like 15 minutes ago. Um, how can eBay resellers start their business with no money? Um, and then I was going to ask mm -hmm. each of you how you started your businesses and, and how it would end. What do you see, how it ending? What's the target? So, um, mm -hmm. seems like it's just you, Sharon. <laughs> I want to ask you. Uh, how did you start? Not like, not like being thrown in the spotlight. No, that's um, it. <laughs> how, to, to be fair, I, I think I've mentioned this, well, I have, I've mentioned this before to you. I left full-time work after our two sons left home, you know, a few years ago. Um, so I wanted to do something for myself, you know. When your kids have grown up, you've left, they've left home. If you if you have a mortgage, the chances are you're either coming towards the end of it by mm -hmm. that time, or you finish mortgage. Uh, and we were fortunate enough, you know, that we'd finished our paying our mortgage about three years ago. And mm. um, so I just wanted to get off the, you know, the the treadmill of working for corporate business. But I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. You know, yeah. I worked in the parcel yeah. industry for twenty years. Um. So the the plan was uh, to set up my own website, buy uh, buying and selling, and mm. um, like mm. bedding, soft furnishings, homeware, giftware, uh, mm. which I did. Um, and at first, it, it were it really took off. I was selling a lot through Facebook friends, family, uh, marketplace, and I decided to go one step further and get a website. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. go on eBay as a business seller. Yeah. And that's where it went a little yeah. bit horribly wrong because <laughs> at that time, yeah, eBay didn't want me as a business seller. <laughs> so I'd only, been open, you... I'd only opened my shop a week and yeah. they shut me down, yeah. you know, <laughs> for some reason. And I have no idea whether it was because I, I was brand new, had no feedback, had not built up a reputation uh, with, you know, with... Um, buying, selling, feedback, all that, yeah. you know, what goes towards this yeah. seller performance. But even just after one week, they shut down. They shut you down. Yeah. Shut me down. And Is that was, because of the products bedding. you were selling? I don't think so, no. No, I, I don't understand. I, I wouldn't understand why they thought, you know, bedding and giftware was yeah. such a risk. Yeah. But I never, ever got an answer. But there was only one person from eBay who just, Subtly said, you still have a personal account. Right. And I thought, oh, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't put no bedding on or I didn't put any of the products. So I thought, right, I need to sell something else now on eBay. Yeah. Um, and that's when I started looking on YouTube for ideas and I come across all, all your guys, you know, yeah. with the charity shops. Maybe, thought, maybe oh, they're basically because you had two eBay accounts. Maybe that's why they shut the new one down. It, it could be, but mm. my understanding is you can have as many eBay accounts as you want. Yeah. You know, for different I don't reasons. see why not. Um, yeah, I don't know whether it was anything to do with my bank account details at that time because I opened a business account with an online um, banking company. Yeah. And I know from experience because... When I worked in, in the parcels, I used to open new accounts. So yeah. I used to bring, you know, I used to go out there and source 
customers who were shipping out with other parcel carriers and, you know, getting them to come on board with us. But part of that, they, they had to go through a finance check. And if right. their bank okay. account was online, mm -hmm. not a high street one, that would go against them. Right, okay. Um, whether it was the bank account, I don't know. I don't know. But so I started really soon. So I started nice. going to charity shops. Um, the, you know, family and friends uh, were giving me items to sell as well. Mm. So I was, you know, selling stuff for them. Um, and then it, it just grew and grew and grew. Uh, and then I realised I was actually making more money on, on the reselling than I were selling bedding and yeah. soft furnishings. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to get shit to that now. I've, I've put um, about 25% of the stock now on eBay because I'm now registered as a business seller on eBay because yeah. I changed yeah. Yeah, recently. Uh, so I feel now a bit more confident that I can put the stuff back on eBay and so mm. far, you know, touch wood, you know, that it's not raising any flags or anything. No, so um, that... But I'm just selling it as cheap. Even if I can just make a couple of quid on it, I just mm. want to show up because I've got like six massive big tubs upstairs in yeah. one of the spare bedrooms and it's just taking up far too much room. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of seeing it now. I'm sick of seeing it. So did you uh, did you get that bedding and soft furnishing stuff manufactured for you? No, no, I bought them from wholesalers. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there's one in Doncaster. Uh, they only sell to trade. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then there's another one up in Leeds. Again, right. they, they only sell to um, people who are registered as business sellers. Yep. Yeah, so uh, I've just got to of bed in. I just need to get shot. Yeah, uh, I was thinking just, about good. bundling it up, you know, selling yep. it in like six, you know, as a job lot. Yeah. Know, to just, I don't even, I know it sounds bad as a business, but, you know, even if I just break even, I, I, I just want to shut it. It's just taking up far too much room. Yeah, sometimes. So, I mean, any ideas on most... how I can get shut rate? I don't know. Well, that's what sometimes most businesses do, right? So they go, right, we've got, I don't know, 10,000 pieces of this item. It's cost us, let's say a pound each, make it easy, 10,000 items. <clears throat> I spent 10 grand and they go, right, we want to make 20% profit on this whole lot, right? So they'll, they'll start marketing yeah. it and I'll sell it. I don't know. Let's say they sell it for... 20 pound an item 10 pound an item they'll get to the point where they've made the 10 grand back and they still have a bunch of stuff left yeah and they'll just mm -hmm. flock it really cheap yeah just to get rid of it yeah because yeah, they're that, still making a profit aren't they yeah of course so they've essentially got their money back from that first lot that they've sold and then they'll have some left over and they'll literally go right okay we're going to sell this all for a pound each and then they'll make that 20 percent on that extra part and yeah. that's why you see yeah i think that's what i'm gonna have to do and that's why you, i mean mm. calculate how much you've spent calculate how much you've made from it and if you're in profit shift it yeah draw a line yeah. under that just get the that. revenue get the get the income coming in that's mm. it draw, draw a line yeah. under that era of your life and then then move on use that money to to buy something else right yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Um, so I'm not um how did it feel when you paid off your mortgage? Oh it's like a weight to come off his shoulders. I bet. It was brilliant, brilliant. Because no matter what shit life throws at you, you know you've still now got your roof over your head. It doesn't yeah. you know what it doesn't matter what risk gambles or you know whatever you do in life now you've got a home yeah and that's how I saw it I couldn't do this while I was you know paying for a mortgage every month yeah. because I couldn't take that risk you know of not yeah, making of an income not making enough you know to pay for that mortgage and other bills as well yeah um so once that was done and dusted and then we finally got the letter you know from the mortgage lenders saying you know, it had been completed. 
Yeah. It was just like. Oh. Then they send they send you the <laughs> deeds. Got no mortgage. Yeah. Because so... I think the deeds are in a vault somewhere in the bank, aren't they? Well, apparently now the they're all um like online. Yeah, it doesn't it's surprise me. They've got like virtual ones now. Yeah. Okay. Or or whatever it's whatever it's called anyway. You know. Um. But yeah, so I thought, you know what, you know, I've worked from being 15 year old. Mm. Uh, I didn't go to college, didn't go to uni. Hey. Oh, oh, that's me. <laughs> we'll cut this bit this out. Can you imagine? Oh dear. Oh dear. We'll, we'll, we'll cut that bit out. All right, okay. I'll, I'll not look, I'll not look. It could be a nice surprise at the end of this. Oh. Um, <laughs> What were I saying now? I've got so much. About um, you're I can't remember what I was your saying. You paid your mortgage yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I, I just said to Steve, uh, you know, like, like I said, I've been working from fifteen. Mm. Only time I've had off is for maternity. Yeah. And that was only for the bare minimum what you you could have off because I needed to get back to work. We needed the money. You know, yeah. we've never had money. <laughs> um. And Steve, Steve's always been a lorry driver. Uh, it's doing something a little different now, not as um, taxing as, you know, as lorry driving. Um, but um, so we've never had a, a massive income, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and um, and I thought, I, I, now things have slowed down. I want to do something for me. Yeah. Um, I know it sounds yeah. selfish, um, where I'm not worried about, Sales figures, sales targets, mm. customer retention, um, you know, taking all the shit off customers if service is not right. Because as, yeah. as well as bringing on new business, I was also account manager as well. So I've got a portfolio of customers. And if service, if their parcels weren't getting delivered, mm. or, or they were getting because um, I was their first part of call. Absolutely fantastic, but I just wanted to just try something for myself. And you know, I'm at that age now where if I don't do it now, I never will do. Yeah. You know, and I'm just going to be stuck. Yeah. You know, stuck on that bloody treadmill going round and round and round. Yeah. You know, until I'm at retirement yeah. age. That's it. So that's it. Yeah, and I've, I've come across all your lots of channels and thought, oh my god, you know that they're oh. making way more than I am. I'm selling stuff <laughs> in bedding. <laughs> so I thought, right, I'm gonna get on well, and uh, yeah, so I did. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, shall I tell you how I started? You probably know anyway. Um, yeah. but everybody else probably might not know newcomers to this channel. Um. Yeah. Essentially, I was buying stuff leading up to the point where I was, I knew I was going to get made redundant. I had six months notice, essentially. Um, right. But previous to that, I've always had that entrepreneurial mindset, I should say. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm definitely not a very good entrepreneur. <laughs> Let's just say that, because otherwise I wouldn't be sitting there doing in my office. <laughs> um, but ultimately from the age of like 13 i used to go around washing cars around the village to make some money trading pokemon cards mid 90s um at secondary school i am that young yes <laughs> and then uh and then kind of it fizzled out got a job and all that sort of stuff in your 20s 30s come along and i'm like right i've always wanted to i was a qualified bookkeeper at that point so i was mm -hmm. doing i maybe had three clients outside of my full-time work and i would also go to car boots at that point and just have a look around see what i could buy to flip um mm. it was very small scale i'd spend like three or four quid at a car boot and stick four items or something on ebay yeah. um and then it got to the point where the department that sits opposite in accounting so you've got the credit control team and you've got the accounts payable team so they're essentially both sides of the fence right so the credit control team in our office got all got made redundant 
all of their work got shipped to India, Singapore, that sort of move, right? It, they got rid of seven people, I think. And I'm like, right, I can see what's happening here. This is the whole finance team, essentially, bar one or two, are going to go to India or Singapore. Mm. So that was two years before I got made redundant. So I was like, right, I need to set something up now because I, then I can kind of, as soon as it happens, if it happens, I can fall straight into that. And then I've got no kind of, I'm looking for a job. I've got no money type thing. Anyhow, um, got the call, say, here's your letter, six months notice, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm trying, by this point, I'm living probably at 70% of my means, right? So I'm getting paid and I'm spending 70% of that money because instantly I'm just moving money out of my bank account because I know that I need to kind of have backup coming. Yeah. Yeah. So get made redundant and I'm right, right. Built this office with my dad and let's get it, get it going. So essentially end of June, 2020. So yeah, three years ago now. Two years ago, twenty one. Oh, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Um, got made redundant, and then yeah, just built the bookkeeping business up to how many clients I got now? I'll probably say twelve. Twelve clients, three regular that are monthly, and then going to um, I was by going to a Maos because essentially it had an emporium there that would you could fill your bag up, and I go that's four quid. You could essentially mm. so cheap. Um and then it kind of filled up so much space. And I was like, right, I said mm -hmm. to Laura, I need to hire someone <clears throat> just to see if it works or not. If I don't hire yeah. someone, I'm gonna regret not hiring someone. And then I'm gonna have all mm -hmm. that what if and regret. So I hired Caroline and she said, Look, you got a puzzle here that's yay big right for seven quid on ebay that sits there for about four months how about putting in that space three pieces of clothing for 15 pounds each and i just went yeah that makes sense so it wasn't about revenue at that point it was about how much money can we fit in a certain space it was about space yeah. at that point mm. so um yeah so we went into okay. Yeah, we went mm -hmm. into clothing and then it went from 500 a month to 2,000 a month within the space of six months. That is fantastic. Mad. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, um, I've kind of not fully niche into clothing, but clothing sells well and shoes. It does. Ladies mm -hmm. shoes. Yeah. Um, I said before, I don't go for the designer. If I see something nice in the charity shop and it turns out to be designer, that, that's yeah. a bonus mm. um but it's mainly standard um you know like your wallace Dorothy perkins yeah stuff like that uh yeah. bon marsh marks and spencers yeah um i mean you know i pick them up cheap enough you know from charity shops but they're quick at selling because i'm not selling them at high prices so okay. average profit yeah. per item it's running at the moment, about five quid. Yeah. Average yeah. profit per item. That's after postage and fees. So for me, you know, that's working well for me. Um, I mean, last month I did over £500 profit, you know, yeah. and again, yeah. you know, I, I'm happy with that, but I can see every month it's growing and growing mm. and growing. Um, mm. But the categories I'm selling the most in are clothing and shoes. Mm. Um, I've still got other stuff on there, you know, bric a brac, bedding, uh, on you know, on my store, but yeah. <laughs> but that's a lot slower. I've tried, you know, selling bric a brac, you know, when I first started, mm. I didn't have a clue what to sell and what wouldn't sell. You know, I just have see stuff in charity shops. Like, oh yeah, that's nice. I brought it on, put it on, and it could be sat there for like six months, thinking, yeah, you know, that would have yeah. been decision there. <laughs> so live and learn. <laughs> Um, yeah, but with the with the clothes, 
you know, it's it's just getting better and better every month. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But and it's like you'll say, you know, if if you have an idea and you want to try it, you've got to try it because mm. you know it's always mm-hmm. best, you know, to try things. If it fails, it fails. It's not end of world. No, if you exactly. don't try, you'll never know if it's going to be a success. Mm. You know, so bringing Caroline in, yeah, uh, to me, even yeah. though she's no longer working for you. It yeah. was still a success because yeah. look how much it grew. Yeah, you know, exactly. and the idea she yeah. brought to the table for you. Hundred mm. you know. percent. It was still you know, a massive benefit. Yeah, hundred yeah. um, percent. Mm. Yeah. I often get like um, people say to me, "So what? What if? What if you buy something and it doesn't sell?" And I say, "Well, mm. I know not to buy that again." Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Don't buy it again. <laughs> I, I've got I've got a storage cupboard full of mistakes. <laughs> mm. So I mean, but ultimately, what I'm finding is I will buy I don't know twenty items from Emmaus for let's say fifty quid, right? Yeah. Three of those items will sell for fifty quid. Mm. Pretty yeah. quickly, like you got fifteen pound, fifteen pound, twenty pound. Right, done. Right, so that's your money got back, mm-hmm. um, and yeah. then yeah, that'll take four or five months to sell. Might do. Yeah. And then after six months, if you're still mm-hmm. on there and it hasn't sold, I might go right. Let's get rid of all of this stuff that's been on there for over six months. Let's do a ninety nine p auction, and then some of that will sell again. So you made your money, more money, and then you relist them, refresh the listing again, and start again. Just yeah. repeat, re- recycle, yeah. repeat, recycle. And I'll urge that yeah, anyone, if, yeah. if anybody's got, wants to start, which probably kind of does lead nicely into our next segment, if anybody wants to start, um, check out Daily Refinement, um, Back From Burnout, she's pretty good, um, yeah. Carpet Chris, all those guys. Um, and what I've learned is that to start with if you want to start with no money just find things around your house that you don't use anymore mm-hmm. and go right yeah. have a have a clear yeah. out put 10 items that are on your house from your house and this might be a nice way nice challenge actually to prove this might this is one of my ideas of the challenge is to how can you start a business with no money so essentially mm-hmm. the idea is you go around your house you pick up 10 items that you don't use anymore and you put them on eBay and we track those items and if they sell we reinvest that money back again mm-hmm. so essentially yeah. got 10 items one sells for a fiver no biggie because you're not using it anymore that five quid goes to a charity mm-hmm. shop use that five pounds turn it to 10 turn it to 20 and so on essentially yeah. you can grow a business very quickly from that and that's the yeah that totally agree. tip that i would use is to find things around your house that you don't use anymore if you don't got no money mm-hmm. do it or go on to facebook yeah. marketplace if you can get in there quick for a freebie get it even if it's like you have to get the bus to go and get it bring it back on the bus again i mean gary v have you had a gary vaynerchuk <clears throat> no no go, i can't say Go check him out. Um, his trash talks are funny. They are pretty good. They're essentially... What? Sorry, what, what's his name? Gary what? Gar- Gary V. Gary, Gary V. Gary V. V double E. Oh, right. Okay. <clears throat> right. And just type in Gary V trash talk. And essentially, in America, they have um, essentially jumble trails. Don't they? They have people selling things on their front garden. Um. Yeah. And he films it like going up to some, like giving them a quid, a dollar, or whatever. And then he'll say at the end of it, he does like a little segment at the end. I mean, this guy runs a nine hundred million pound dollar business, right? But he's out here. This is his love. He's out here like doing this on a Saturday morning. It's yeah. Quite um, <laughs> but he's just showing people I, how to do it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I do watch um, Daily Refinement, mm. Chris. Yeah, that's his name, isn't it, Chris? Yeah. yeah. Chris. Um, yeah, really good, really good. And it's not so it's just full of enthusiasm. 
mm. you know. Uh, and uh, but when I first started watching him, it just literally got banned a Phoebe. <laughs> it did. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 Because it, it couldn't provide some kind of like a, a receipt or proof of purchase about his That's trainers. Right. Because right. he got a lot of trainers yeah. in one go, didn't he? Yeah, but it just goes to show, you know, that they're ruthless, you know, yeah. and you don't, and there's no like second chances with them, or you know, mm. so you've got to be really careful. I mean, I know for a fact I didn't do anything wrong when I first opened that business account no. a yeah. year ago. Nothing wrong yeah. at all. I think it was purely because I've not built up a reputation. I've got zero feedback. I'd applied for a business account, applied for a shop, started chucking yeah. things on my shop, you know, yeah. ready to, you know, start selling. And within, within a week, I got an email saying that they thought I was a risk to the eBay community and shut me down. I thought, oh, I got a minute, you know, <laughs> what's happening? Yeah, that's I think, oh my God, what am I going to do? Yeah. I've got all this ready. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, my, my will just crash down, you know. Um, but now you, you find other ways and means of. And there are other platforms things, now, aren't there? There, there are. Yeah, there are. I, I did try, but uh, to be fair, yeah. Um, th there's another yeah. one uh, called Onbuy, uh, and basically that's more or less. It's very similar to eBay, but it's more new items. Right. And um, so I opened an account with them, but the, the sales are so slow, very, very, very slow. I think I've got to about 20 listings on there, and I might get one sale a month. But at first, when you first signed up, there was no no charges, uh, mm. you know, no no shop fees, should I say, no shop fees. Um, if you didn't sell £500 per month, I think it was. Yeah. Um, but recently, yeah. they changed that, and now it's nineteen ninety nine plus VAT per month. So even if you don't sell anything, you still have that to pay. Mm. But, but I've I've given notice to close it. Yeah, it's pointless. Uh, I've been on there nearly nearly a year, and I'm have sold about six things. Yeah. Um, it's not out there. It's not like eBay. No, you they know, haven't got the advertising. Any advertising. <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, nobody knows about them. No, you know, the first time I heard of you heard about on by mm. who's on by, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, just yeah. like a weird name, as well, the name out there. It's a bit What's of a weird name, it's a bit of a weird name as well. On by, mm, yeah, it doesn't stick in your yeah. head, does it? No, but yeah, they are UK based as well, not American, okay. it's they are they are UK based, yeah. Oh, but it's just not, I don't know, they, they, they say that the you know, the the quickest up and coming marketplace. Well, I've been with him now for 12 months. And there's yeah. nothing quick about it, to be fair. <laughs> they might be watching this thinking, oh, that's it, just slate our website off. Why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I think oh, build, but building. If are, you know, and people knew about them, it would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. It would be really, really good. Mm. But... Yeah, I think cool. bu building a website now, because you could probably argue that market for websites is quite saturated, right? And to get in for your face in front of a lot of people, it has to be extremely unique and extremely good. Yeah. There's no there's no yeah. like mediocre websites that do well, is there? That has to be extremely yeah. good. And I was mm -hmm. um in the, there was a big boom around like buying sneakers and trainers that uh because websites would do a limited offer on, on a certain amount of trainers and you could get in there quick mm -hmm. and they would be like really popular so if you got in there quick and flipped them quick you could make really good money but i yeah. wanted to get a website sorted out so we could get these trainers on there and i was like quoted 10 to fifteen thousand for a decent website and if you're going to try and get yourself off to a flying start you need a decent website right so we've, we've been that idea off um yeah yeah uh, hi george hi, hi george hi. hello yeah. um sorry I, we started I a bit early 700 pounds 
I, I paid seven hundred pound, but it was a mates rate. Uh, right, okay. Was, like, when I first started. Yeah. And um, but when I signed up for the um, I don't know what it's called. Um, you know, like your dot co dot uk. Oh, the domain. domain. Yeah, yeah. When when I signed up for the domain, well, bought the domain. I signed up for two years. I still yeah. got the website for another twelve months. Uh, and again, once that's finished, you know, I I want I want to show up. Uh, because yeah, really. it's very difficult to get traffic to to your website. Very, Unless very you difficult. pay for it. Uh yeah yeah. But if you if you're not if if you're not selling you know high value and you know making massive product uh, profits out of the products what you're selling. Yeah, it's just not yeah. worth it. Yeah, but I, I've tried it; it's failed. You know, and I Talk know I'm not to do that again. Uh, I'm just um, going to stick to. So I mean, if you it. if you have a really good website and people love it, they will tell their friends about it, and essentially, then yeah. that's what it takes off, right? Word of mouth is the most powerful advertising tool out yeah. there, so it yeah. needs to be yeah extremely good. Yeah, but now you've got you know free selling you know with facebook marketplace mm. um you know so if you've got anything to sell you can stick it on there yeah you, you, you do get a lot of weird messages coming through you know <laughs> people in foreign countries saying oh, i've still got this and, and you look at the profile and you know they'll be in a completely foreign country thinking well, mm -hmm. What what are you gonna do? Like you know, pay fifty quid to have it delivered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know full full well that you know it's. But I don't even know why the waste of time. To be fair, you know yeah. it's pointless. Um, yeah. but then you get others saying, "Oh, can you sell it me for two quid?" No. <laughs> <laughs> it's <not. laughs> Oh, sorry, I swore then. That's all right. <laughs> it, it gets marked as not for kids anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> Um, George, oh, welcome. Oh dear. Hello. Another week. How was last week? Um, been, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it was good. Kind of. I saw a video the other day, and I don't know how old it was. Is it quite recent that you moved out of your um, lockup? Oh yeah, that was well. It was not last week. The week before, but I released the video last week, basically. Right, okay. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've uh, I've moved to a bigger unit essentially. I've uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's double the size. I think I think it's more it's more than double the size, uh, and it's double the money. But it's yeah. uh, yeah, we've we've moved to a bigger unit essentially, and I I don't know, it's yeah, it's I was, I was kind of terrifying. Because I was like, okay, it's kind of the next step and everything, but yeah, I've uh, it was it was kind of a big decision, but it's also it was gonna happen anyway. But it was it's closer to where I live, and yeah. it's um, uh, it's open till ten o'clock and everything. I thought it was twenty four hours. It wasn't. It's open till ten o'clock, but that's like Monday to Sunday. Uh, whereas at the moment. I'm like it's nine. To, it's literally nine to five Monday to Saturday, and also, um, uh, what what is it? It's it's like half an hour. Well, they say it's like half an hour to forty minutes away. I think it's more like half an hour, but um, yeah, it's like the next town over. So yeah, but okay. like now it's like two minutes away. I nice. can literally. I could probably walk there in about twenty minutes. Twenty minutes, or yeah. like get a bike there in like ten minutes. So, but yeah, it's it's. it's really good and it's clean and it's secure <laughs> yeah that's it's like that's... this the place where i was, I was at, <clears throat> the place where i was before it was like there's, there was bird crap everywhere it was like every time it rained i was like oh god please don't you know <laughs> don't like... rain in my thing I, got, <laughs> I, I had like a plastic sheet i mean to be fair it, it never actually flooded my unit my units sort of, what i had was on the corner but it was on the top so I could see like the 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 roof. You could see like the plastic sheeting, and you could hear the dripping. And I was like, "Oh god, it's going to come through! It's going to come through!" And he's like, "But yeah, I, it's it's just like the next logical step. Let's put it that way." Yeah, I think. <laughs> but, I um, think there's a big difference yeah, when it's closer 
to your house, right? That's time. Time is valuable, mm-hmm. and if you're spending forty minutes to get there to then start packing, and then forty minutes to get back, that's that's an hour and a half, isn't it? Hour yeah. and a half that you're just traveling just to do your job. So, um, two minutes, five ten minutes up the road is decent. I mean, we 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 thought it would be like something like I think it's six. In fact, because I usually go probably about three or four times a week. Uh, to the lock up and I think it was something like we worked out it would be like five or six hours I was like that's like a working week that's like a working day yeah exactly yeah, week, yeah. That exactly. Yeah. Yeah. you know so it's a bit oh God. but I mean what, what I do is that whenever I go I was like doing other things along the way so like I was sourcing as well like when yeah. I went but yeah it's it, yeah it's, it was bound to happen I was I was going to move I was going to expand but yeah, I thought I thought I, I could have gotten away with it for another like six months, I think. But at the same time, I would it would have done me head in because <laughs> I've been there for yeah. two years. All right, oh, got a sale. Sorry, ching. Ching, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it was bound to happen. Uh, I was planning on it, but I was yeah, I just fast tracked it. Yeah. Probably to the worst month because it's like the summer slowdown. Although I've got two months half price. So I was like, oh, so technically it was like a month free. <laughs> Is that a thing? Because Carbo Chris was on about that the other day, the summer slowdown. Is that a thing? I've I've yeah. seen it slow down. I've definitely seen it slow down. Lots of people do. I mean, and there was a couple of people who were like, oh, it doesn't exist. It's just, you know, people's in people's heads and everything. I think it does. But then I feel like I work harder in the summer than they do in the winter i'm a bit hibernating in the winter (laughs) but like i feel like i i do work a bit harder in the summer to try and mitigate it yeah so yeah yeah because i think last seven days Mm. i'm down to 260 a week now i was at four or five hundred before and i think that's partly down to the fact that over the last two weeks i've had a lot of bookkeeping work come in that i need to get done Right, so I still haven't done everything, um, but ultimately, yeah, it could be the fact that I'm not listing as much as I should be. But because I've got a pile of stuff on this chair that I still need to get listed and a bag down there. Um, but yeah, I I kind of don't want to believe it, but it's happening to me. But I know the reasons why. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it definitely so, does have an effect, though, doesn't it? If you if you don't list as much, you, you it tells in your figures straight away. Mm, yeah, just drops off, doesn't it? I mean, I'm already yeah. I'm already thirteen percent down on the last thirty one days, and it's only been I suppose it's a rolling thirty one days, but yeah, I'm already thirteen percent down, which is kind of worrying for me. Yes. Um, How about seven percent down? Yeah. So the chat we had, up. you're up. <laughs> Sharon's up. Woo! Yay! <laughs> um, George, the chat that we had before, the question that I had before is how how did you start your business? Ooh, how? Yeah, um, I mean, what yeah. were the what were the thoughts, practicalities leading up to you starting? What happened basically? And how did you start? Well, I, I've always like done like reselling and I've always done like, you know, um, like bits. I've always had an eBay account. Um, I think one of my, my personal eBay account is on, um, was opened up in like 2004, five, something like that. So it was still like, like college around mm-hmm. that time. And uh, so I've always like picked stuff up and I've always like sold stuff. So it's always been in the background, but I've never like, I've never had a constant stock kind of what's it. It was always like, oh, I'll just put something up and sell it. And then, um, uh, you know, finished uni, worked dead end jobs and everything. And I think I put it on my Instagram, but I kind of, I went through some shit. (laughs) Um, And I had a bit of a breakdown and I basically my life kind of like imploded that's kind of like the 
be a, be a, be all and end all of it. And I was literally just on YouTube one day, and then I saw this. Uh, it was Ben Fitzpatrick, and he put up one of his videos, and I was like, "Oh, who's this?" And I just like watched, and I was like, "Oh." Like, it just kind of like oh right he does it for really like he goes to car boots because I, I think it was on the Sunday and I'd literally been to the car boot yeah. just to have a wander I wasn't even taking in anything necessary. I don't even think I bought anything that Sunday but I just saw Ben Fitzpatrick one of his videos and um yeah and it just kind of like clicked and then I was like oh I could, I could do that so what I did that night I had I, had, I was in loads of debt and um, I was like, okay, I've got like a bill coming up, mm. and I think it was one of my card payments for like a hundred and something pound. Anyway, I went through all of my stuff because I had like loads of stuff in boxes at the time, and I had it all piled up in like a spare room, and I went through it all, and I was like, okay, I can get rid of all of this stuff. Anyway, I started mm. just doing that, and I ended up making, I think it was something like two hundred quid in like a week, mm. and for, I had. I only had like I think altogether I listed probably around a hundred items. Yeah, and in that week it generated like two hundred quid essentially. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> it, it didn't <laughs> just work. So I went to the charity shop and I was like, okay, <laughs> I was like, I paid off my Wait, bill stuck. that was coming out. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, oh, what should I do? And I, I think I, I, do you know what I, I remember getting? And I was like, this is how bad it was. I I started getting like. And mountain warehouse stuff because I didn't know. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, I'll just I'll just get like, and trespass. That was another trespass mountain warehouse and like regatta. Was like, oh, they're like nice brands. I was like, <laughs> and I took it back. I was like, oh, he gone? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but, like, to like, uh, oh, Hills on his back. and Corey, who was uh, <laughs> Devon. Yeah, you you went you went a bit blank there, George. <laughs> but like, I just, you, you you froze, <laughs> you you froze. You froze with no voice. Oh, did yeah. I freeze? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm 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 a, oh, I'm a there. Yeah, yeah, I can hear yeah, you now. You're back now. <laughs> I t- it's it's my is this. Um, I'm going to try next week. I'm going to try and do my laptop because this um, tablet it's been an arse. It's not letting me log into the meeting. I was like, oh, it's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So I've, uh, I I just from there I just started doing research and then picking up stuff and it's just kind of snowballed. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's it's just amazing how how far it's gone. Funnily enough, how you you've asked me that question and I was like thinking about it the other day. I was like when I was doing my, my video of my lockup and I was mm. speaking to my dad and we're like, it was like, how far have I actually kind of like built mm. it and everything? I'm like, oh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good feeling. And where I was. Yeah. How, how, how it, many, it is, yeah. yeah. How many years then did it take you, George, you know, to, to grow the business to, you know, to where you are now? And, you know, yeah, but obviously back then, you know, you were selling bits and bobs and, you know, you had 200 quid in, in your first week. That that were amazing. Um, but obviously that wasn't, you know, continuous, I should imagine, because obviously then you had to go out and buy stuff to sell. So mm. how, how long has it taken you to get to where, you know, the, the level where you're at now, consistent level? Well, I was like, um, uh, for the first, well... I, let me think. It was about five. It twenty sixteen. That's when I properly first started. That was like the year of my mm. demise. <laughs> like twenty fifteen, sixteen were really, like really bad years for mm. me. I just have like the worst kind of memory. I don't remember most of twenty sixteen. That's how bad it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've kind of blocked it out. But um, it was around uh, August time when I moved back in with my family. Um, and that's when it kind of started. So I, I think it also, I think it benefited because I looked straight into quarter four yeah. almost. You know what I mean? Like towards that thing. So I, I was selling quite a lot then and that's why it like snowballed. But I think the primary thing for me, I was just like, right, I need to pay off. I need to get rid of loads of stuff because it's all like in boxes and clogging up the house. But also I was like, because I'd had to move out of my own, my own house at the time. So I had to, I had, a, had a sofa to get rid of. I had... I had um, uh, oh, what was it? it? There was like a fridge and fridge freezer. There was loads of like white good stuff that I needed to get rid of. 
and I mm-hmm. I sent them to auction and they didn't make much money and I was like they're brand new <laughs> I was like, yeah. and I ended up sell- I ended up selling something on a uh, Facebook marketplace so I was like yeah that's fine but um yeah it took it took well it, for about a year it took I was doing all this research and I was like really kind of revving everything up but it it took a full year to really start getting consistently about 50 quid a day mm. that's what I, I was like I said to I said to him I was like I need 50 quid a day like to earn at least part-time hours you know and just say right I need to get back on my feet like that and because I, I was I was a, I, I don't I couldn't how am I going to describe this I was like I was an absolute mess. I was a bit like a zombie. When yeah. I was like, you were like a zombie. You just, you, you weren't even there. You, you were completely gone. You were just like, and then when you started reselling, you kind of was in a, like a, a structure and you were, it, it helped, it helped me. I say it helped me build, rebuild my life. And it, it was like, it helped, I'm, it I'm a mind in a weird kind of way. It helps you focus on something. Yeah, it really right? did. Exactly. I know, I know a lot of people go through like, there's a lot of mental health, but uh, people talk about mental health and everything. And yeah, yeah, and I was, I was, there's no, there's no, uh, under, what's the word? Not underestimate or under describe it. It's like, I was, I was a complete mess. And yeah. I, slowly as the business was building, I was like becoming more human. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of went like that. So it was like that for like three years. And then just before COVID, I thought, right, I'm going to get, I was doing quite well and I was doing like, I built it up to about a hundred pound a day. So that was like four years in. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, yeah, for about a year it took me to really kind of get a full, like stock, a, a full like um, inventory of uh, stuff and to build it up to about 50 pound a day. But then it took probably about another year to build it up to a hundred pound mm. a day, like you know, mm. net and everything. And that was like full-time wage. And now I'm averaging around that again because I got another job. I went away and um, I've got a full-time job, like a normal job. And I went away and then COVID hit. <laughs> so I was like, oh, and then it, that knee capped everything. So I had to come back and because reselling was there and I still had like a few bits. So I thought, right, I'll start again. It wasn't as scary this time and it wasn't as well. And I could go into it quicker. So this second time around, it's only taken me like a year well less than a year to really kind of build up that quickly yeah again mm-hmm. so Brilliant. yeah I've got like two phases of reselling and this one is like it's gotten more quicker and I said and I said to myself no I, I'm really good at this um I can do it and it's yeah it's gotten there a bit quicker so sorry about the roundabout way of told the story no, that's fantastic. Perfect. yeah 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 and and that Brilliant. kind of Brilliant um, story. Before you joined, and kind of you joined at the tail end of what we were talking about, essentially the challenge that I kind of came up with was how how can you start a business with no money, right? So a lot of people don't have money to invest, and but when you go right, I want to start a business, but I've got no money because people always think that you have to have money to start a business. You don't, right? So what I I did this as a challenge before was um. Well, I started with a tenner to make a thousand pounds, right, and see how quickly I could do that, right. And I think it took me, yeah. um, probably about two months to reinvest that and to get a thousand pounds back. And what I did was I paid off my car loan with it, right. But ultimately, the best way to start with no money is to find items around your house that you don't use anymore, sell those, say, find ten items sell those on eBay, you will sell one or two fairly quickly, even if it's over auction, and then re- reuse that money again that you get into your bank account and go to car boot, go to charity shops and find stuff to reinvest that capital every time. And like I say, it doesn't take long to get up. I mean, you say it took six months. It probably took, um, when Caroline joined, I was at 500 a month and we went up to two grand a month within six months, just reinvesting that money again. And I'm still hitting two grand a month. I would say July, I'm not going to hit two grand a month, judging by what the last two weeks have been like. But um, yeah, essentially, that was the challenge idea that I came up with, is to see how much we can make 
and start with no money. And essentially have a spreadsheet oh, of those dedicated, dedicated items, right? And we can come in here every week and go, right, these are the 10 items I picked or five items. We don't have to have 10. This is what I put on. And we could share, we could have a spreadsheet that we share on SharePoint that we update ourselves. So there's one place that we all know that gets updated or whatever. That's how we know where we're at. Okay. Yeah. Another thing that I, I just, um, I don't know if they still do it at the car boot because I go there a bit earlier now. I used to roll out of bed at like eight o'clock and then go to the car boot. And then it was like at the end of the day. So most people were selling their stuff for like dirt cheap. But mm. I used to pick, um, go to house clearance places and they used to say fill a bag for like a like fiber or fill a box for fiber. And then at the end, there was like two or three guys and they say, take what you want. It's yeah. free, take what you want, like right right at the end. And that's how I scaled up really quickly. I was mm. like, get I got like there was so many golf clubs. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, we're we're in the middle of like loads of golf uh places, um, fields and everything. But um yeah, there was loads I sold so many golf clubs to mm. what's it, but that's a really good I because now I don't really need it, but like yeah, I think people the they go straight to the charity shops and they think, oh, I can spend like a fight. It's like you don't need to. You can just go to your car boot, like say, mm -hmm. fill, sell what, what you've got in your house, yeah. and then go to the car boot because it's like it's, you can get some su such good bargains. Yeah, it's yeah, incredible. Exactly. So if you're up for that, yeah, that's that challenge. Yeah, I'm up for it. I will say, I'm just trying to think. Like, um, Laura. Like I said, Sharon started a full-time job yesterday, which is incredible. Um, so we have another decent wage coming in. Um, it's not the point. The point is that she's actually doing what she loves now, working with animals. That's not the point. <laughs> that's oh, the main. Oh, that's so good. Um, so, which means that school holidays. So I've got a four-year-old. Are going to start from the end of next week. Until the end of next August. Week yeah, yeah, I know, August. right? Next yep. week. 17th of July is his last day. So I won't be able to do these at this time in the morning during the day. Because I will let be daddy daycare. Unless you want a four year old screaming in the background <laughs> or running in. <laughs> um, so it might have to move to an evening if, if that's yeah. all right. Just okay. so I can, um, I'm just bringing up. Hang on, wait, was, where's my calendar? I'm away, um, on between the 24th and the 28th, and the um, what is it, the, the 5th of August to the actual Tuesday. Um, so I'll be, I could do it next, I could do it next week, I can't do it the week after, okay, but then I can do it the week that so i'm like sandwiched in between, <laughs> between two but um i think i put if you do it on the oh no i won't be back really in time on the tuesday evening because my flight is in it comes in at like half seven yeah and it'll take like an hour to get back so yeah i, I might mean, have to miss the the first week in august um the kind of idea oh, I'm in Belgium. Had was probably around about eight o'clock um eight o'clock time um, I, I might be able to do it like on my phone. I could dr drive back and be like that and <laughs> hold it on the way back. <laughs> and I can come in and, uh, you know, comment. <laughs> Hang on. The 17th is a Monday. I'm all right on Mondays. It's only like, I just like this Sundays because we, we go out and, and what have you. Um, I'm just looking on Wednesday, the nineteenth of July. I'm just on the website. Summer term closes Wednesday, the nineteenth of July. Ah, yeah, I'm all right for that day. Uh, but Jack's so, so the first one, then are we? Are we just going to like do a little showcase on what we've got and what we've put on? Can can we put them on now? Yeah. Or do you yeah. want to I mean, wait? I, I, I think it. Um, I think it probably 
yeah, we can showcase them first. And and the rule I think should be yeah. it shouldn't be anything that is already in your inventory. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Does that makes sense. Ooh, I mean, I'm this not is forcing, interesting. I'm not forcing you to sell wardrobe. stuff. I'm not forcing you to sell stuff that you're obviously going to use, right? But ultimately, I'm trying to think of a way to show people that you can start with no money. Yeah. Shall we? Shall we just start with five instead of ten? Yeah, five is. Oh, five I think is, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to struggle to get ten you know ten items from around the house, but five. Yeah. I'll mm. set up the. Yeah. Uh, go on, go on, George. I was going to say five is a good is a good light like, start. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like, I've got I've got a lot of stuff that I was going to get rid of because I'm actually going to do a car boot. So. <laughs> I think I'm already kind of ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but do, do you want me to do like a video on it as well? I don't you can mind do doing like a video because I was I was going to do like a car boot video about like you know clearing out my stuff and doing a car boot, but I can adapt it to the challenge if you want. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a good idea. Do a little video, <laughs> a week uh, on week video. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> um. A week on week video. One. Essentially, um, we could after the. I mean, try to think how you how you I'm would frozen. film it. Am I frozen? Oh. No, you're fine. Your your face is frozen. There you go. Um. <laughs> so when you reinvest that money, I suppose it has to be like right. Okay, these are the items that I've bought to reinvest. Essentially. Yeah. 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 What well, I do is so I don't. I don't. Join... Yeah, sorry. What? No, 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 you go. I was. Oh, I'm yeah, just so that I'm clear. Um, so the first week, we, we're just getting five personal items from around yep. the house. Yeah. Go on eBay. So we're doing a little showcase on the first week. And then we'll stick them on eBay. And then every week, we'll show what's sold, how much yep. for, yep. Um, and what we've bought out of, of the profit, what, what's left over. Yeah, essentially. I, the spreadsheet that I can set up will be obviously the title of your description. Obviously, the first five are going to be you paid nothing for it, mm -hmm. sold it, and this is the profit on it. And then that would could yeah. then show what you bought with that item, that money, yeah, how much, cool. how much cash you got left over, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Sounds good. Bring yeah. it on. <laughs> And then how long is the challenge for? I don't know. Is is there going to be a certain amount? Um, what we have to reach and the first well, person, the first to, person to get to wins. X revenue. Yeah, but what what is a a realistic amount? I mean, a realistic amount is three figures, right? You know, it, for, for, for me. You know, I, I, I really don't know. Your guys are most experienced. I've not even been doing this a year yet. You know, it could be a year in September. Um, so realistically, you know, from your point of view, I'll, I'll just I'll just go whatever you decide. A uh, realistic view is three figures. I just what people get involved. <laughs> no, of course. Taking two years to get there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, a hundred quid. Yeah, it would be amazing if like you find one item and it ends up selling for like a hundred quid though. Yeah, <laughs> well, no. ding ding. Well, like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Should we say five hundred then? Um, the five hundred pound challenge. Yeah. 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 That's not like a challenge ring to it. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to write it down or else I forget. <laughs> I've been writing things down a lot in like books, and then they're like, oh, I won't forget it. And then I was like, which book did I write it down in? <laughs> <laughs> You've got so many books. <laughs> I do. I've got like loads of like ideas books. And I've got like a whiteboard, and my whiteboard is like, I write all my current video ideas <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, I've got one of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've just seen it. Yeah, in the background. <laughs> I feel like I'm out of love. I've, I've not got a white ball. 
I'm, I'm a bit greedy. I've got two. <laughs> no, mine's just it just has YouTube on there, and it's just like ideas and stuff. But I've got like this is my this is like an ideas book from a for me what's that and i've got like oh you can't see it's blurred like lots of ideas and i've been ticking them off as i've been going along yeah but it's basically because i used to do this video um i I haven't really done one i'm doing one at the moment for the barbie movie but it's like um you know deep dives into certain products and stuff so yeah yeah, uh my next one's barbie (laughs) (laughs) i saw a little um youtube short of mr beast the other day and he was in an interview and they basically said what is your he goes what what's what are you doing in three weeks time and he said i know exactly what we're doing in three weeks time because all of my videos are scheduled every day for the next 12 months i think is literally 12 months ahead they have to yeah. think of an idea every day for 12 months ahead of time wow it's incredible wow. isn't it yeah, and he has like he, he goes through like with like hundred thumbnails to choose from for for one for each video, doesn't he? And it's yeah. like he whittles it down. That him and his team whittle everything down, and they do like test subjects and how likely people are going to click on it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, now you don't need to because you are Mister Beast. You know, yeah, of you, you don't need to. You could put like a black kind of thing with just your face on it, and it will go through. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. It's madness, anyway. Cool. What else do I have on here? How do you see your business ending? That's a good one. What's the end goal? Not even honest. No, it's not. It's not a negative thing. How do you see it finishing, or or do you see it finishing? What's no, the end goal, no. I suppose? Is there something that you're oh. working towards? No, just, I, 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 I just want a wage. <laughs> just want a wage. I just want money. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when I first started this, uh, last September, I think it was, I said to Steve, I said, look, I said, just give me two or three years. If I know not growing, not working, you know, mm. and it's not getting anywhere, then I'll just pack it in and go and get a part-time yeah. job. I don't want to go back full-time. Yeah. I, can't, I can't be doing it. Um, but every month, every week, I can see it's growing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, you know, I don't know, you know, ending, I don't even want to think about that because I just want to get to a level where it's enough you know, to, you know... That's your end goal, then? The, the Get moment, it to it, we've only got coming in, yeah, these wages coming in, so I'd like to be able to contribute again, you know, to yeah. change the gas and electric yeah. and, and everything else, uh, and, so, and still have a little bit more money left to put to one side for, like, a holiday, you know, one yeah. or two holidays a year. <laughs> so, for me, you know, I'm, I'm not even thinking about how it's going to end I just while while I'm fit enough and able enough you know to go out sourcing car boots charity shops mm-hmm. you know and then taking everything to post office mm-hmm. or to the every shop you know it's not strenuous is it but no. you, you've still got to no. you know and still have my wits about me to be able to do it I'll, I'll just make it continuing you know yeah. I'll uh, I'll probably be you know, the, the oldest eBay in town, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's that Sharon, oh, she's the yeah. OG eBay. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, so yeah, it you know, but, but if I get to wait, say, you know, I'll touch wood mm. if I still if I do get to wait, say, and I've still got, you know, my faculties and I'm, you know, and the health. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm just going to continue. I don't care. I'll be getting my pension as well as, you know, some eBay. Yeah, you'd money. be doubling your money, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I've not really got an end game. <laughs> George? Um, well, my. I was again. It was to pay off. I st- properly started eBay to pay off like debts and stuff. And I'm um, like, off my overdraft and then I paid off. 
um, a loan and two credit cards. And then I started uh, getting pretty good at it. And I, just, I started like, I mean, I was contributing to the household and, I've, and I, now I pay for um, the storage unit, I pay for the cars, I pay for the sky. Um, yeah, we, we've all got our little things that we pay for. So I've got them, they're like my outgoings every month. Mm-hmm. And then anything else is like gravy. Um, so one of the things that I am doing, like me and my brother are doing, we're saving up money for to put a deposit down on a house, like because we're renting at the moment. It was a whole kind of thing, but like we're we're renting at the moment, and me and my brother will be like properly first time buyers, and so we thought we'll do it together, and then at least like later on, hoping in the next five to ten years we'll have enough. And we've yeah. already got a big chunk saved up, but um, I t- I can't tell you the the feeling of you using eBay money like. You're, at, you're just at the beginning at the moment, aren't you, Sharon? You, you can see it kind of increasing. And you're like, oh, this yeah. is working. This is really good. It's really like, oh, it gives you a bit of a buzz. Like, so you it month, does. Month, you're like, oh, it, mm. this works. It's, it's a proper good feeling, isn't it? Yeah. And like, that's how it feels. And that's how I feel at the moment. Like, every time I knock off like a, a credit card, I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> so my last credit card that I knocked off was just before Christmas. And I was like, oh, yeah. And it took, so for about five years, it took a long time, but it was like, oh, I've knocked it off. But like, yeah, so the goal, I suppose the end game or the goal is to, is to, you know, buy a house, essentially. It'll be the house that Tat's built. That's it, yeah. <laughs> essentially, it'll be, um, yeah, it'll be eventually, yeah. it'll be, what's it? Because obviously like the mortgage rates, they're all going through the roof. So I think we're saving at the right time and hopefully we'll buy at the right time. Yeah. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, because mm-hmm. they're, I saw obviously George yeah. Ross's video, and he's just moved out of the house, and it's it's very difficult for a self-employed person to get a mortgage, yeah, because uh, they want so like, at years. least like three years with the books, and they recommend five years now. It's like because of the situation, it's like oh, so yeah. I think we'll because I've, I've I've already got like so many years with the books, but hopefully by that time when I eventually apply for a mortgage, I'll have a solid kind of back history and yeah they can see what i do and everything so yeah that's the end goal for me just to get a house essentially buy a house <laughs> nice. if in doubt i'll just buy a caravan <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that Not Not wrong with caravan. Yeah. <laughs> my my one would be to have a unit that would people can come into to buy stuff that would be my end goal yeah. with probably three employees three or four other employees that would help run run it for everything from i've got i've either got to focus on the bookkeeping or focus on the ebay reselling. if that's pretty clear that when i drop one the other one drops down and when i start one the other one drops right um but the bookkeeping is regular that's regular income um but ultimately, what would be nice would be to have a place that has an office in there that I can probably do some of the bookkeeping and all the other employees would run it and the eBay stuff while I'm doing the bookkeeping and then I can come in and do stuff like that and video editing and things like that. So that's the end goal for me would be to get to a point where I can start hiring again and start looking at a bigger premises other than this four by four office. <laughs> That's my angle. I don't know who it is who we'll watch and I saw someone on YouTube and they had like a walk-in unit. They had they did eBay and they had everything in the back, but then they had like a like a storefront almost mm-hmm. and people could go in and have a mooch. Yeah. It's really it was a really good idea. And I was like, oh, that is a really good idea to just, you know, think about like having a storefront. Because obviously bricks and mortar looks mortar, everyone says, Oh, they're dying off. I don't think they are. I think they're kind of just adapting. Like, yeah. if you follow, I think it's on Instagram, uh, Bex Bizarre. She does a lot of pop ups and she does yeah. like, she goes to like um, events and stuff and she pops up like a store and she, do, she goes to like the Red Brick Market in Liverpool. I think uh, one of the subscribers, Mandy, she's always flipping Mandy. She's got a, a unit in Red Brick in Liverpool. Yeah. And it's, yeah, she, she says um, it's, it does pretty well. So, yeah, and yeah, I think I'm from thinking... a reseller, he's got a few units. Yeah. The gist is behind that would be like your clothing would be on racks and each item would have 
a tag on it, a bit like this, essentially, with the eBay number on. So yeah. when it, when it, when someone picks it up, you can go, well, okay, that needs taken off eBay now. Yeah. And the chances are you're gonna, and if it sells, then you just go around. Each rack would have a number on it, and you could go around and pick that off the rack to sell it. That's the simplistic idea that I had. Good idea. Um, yeah. Good idea, that. But it's fine. It came I do. I... <coughs> no, I was just I do like the idea of a bricks and mortar store or like, you know, just a like a, a permanent pop up shop or, you know, I do like, I love that idea. Yeah. I think it, I'm an old, because we do it every day, we shop. I do yeah. like the idea of having something of your own. It's, it's, yeah, it's just nice. It's a nice kind of idea. I, I, I would love it. Yeah. Personally. Cambridge rent, though, is ridiculous. I think it's... Oh, uh, yeah, I can imagine. Um, so I think I'm in the wrong town to start something like that, <laughs> essentially. Um, and it, if you if you apply for a, a unit, it has to, I think it has to be approved by Cambridge University. You can't just have a unit. Why? That they have um they essentially own all of the retail buildings in Cambridge. So really? when you pay, so when you pay well, I suppose they own the lease, I suppose. So um essentially when you apply for that unit, you go through an estate agent and I think if they don't like it being there, then you they can go see ya, kick you up. That's strange, pretty, isn't it? Pretty harsh, yeah, isn't it? Um, mm. Which is why you'll see if you go around town, you'll never see a nightclub on the ground floor because they 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 mm. don't like it. So all of Not the nightclubs are, all the non nightclubs are either basement or first floor. Okay. Very strange. That's weird, fair that enough. That's um, a bit odd, but fair enough. <laughs> that's what happens when you live in a posh town, I suppose, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you've still got your yeah. camper van thing. Have you still got yes. that? Yes, yes. Your, your postman um, Pat van. Postman Pat van, yeah, we call it Pat. Um, It got hired out for 10 days last week, so I got it back on Sunday. Um, oh. So, yeah, some... A lady was coming down, I think she said Doncaster, I can't remember now, but she came down in her camper van. Oh, man, like it was. Yeah, and she had a blowout on the A1. So she literally blew her driver's side tyre out and smashed into the central reservation. But she had to come down here to work. She started a new job down there. So um, essentially, that period of time starting a new job and finding a place to live was a camper van that she'd brought down, but then she pretty much wrote it off. So uh, she searched on Airbnb and my, and my van was there. Literally two miles up the road was where, she, where the campsite was where um, she was staying. So I just drove it there and set it up. And she was quite It's grateful. weird, I've been, I've, I've been on Airbnb because um, we booked our holiday through that. And uh, I was on, um, uh, because obviously I'm going to Belgium and everything, and I'm going, well, I'm going to Brussels and then I'm going to Ghent and then Antwerp. I'm doing like three days, three cities kind of thing. Yeah. And I was looking at like Airbnbs and stuff. And I was like, I was like, some of the deals are incredible. Like, you know, when you look at hotels and it's like, why would I pay like £90 for like one room for one night? And it's like a really horrible little room <laughs> when yeah. there was an Airbnb for £45. It was an entire apartment. And I was like, it's literally right next door to each other. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll yeah. have the entire apartment. Thank you. But yeah, it's incredible. I love Airbnb. Have you seen the van, George? Oh. No, I haven't. Um, so if you, I'm, I'm going to share my oh, screen. My um, and this is a bit of a shame, shameful advertising plug here for me, but thank you. <laughs> um, so if you type You're in unique, yeah, Airbnb. that's it, unique camper van. Pat on Google, it comes up with that's mine first in the queue. Um, come on. 
But there you go. It's not unstable. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, looking good. I love the silhouettes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Have that done? Or did you just buy it like that? No, I had it sprayed. Um, so you got um, inside. When it gets there. Um, I've just had everything fixed on it. So I've got solar panels on the roof as well now. Um, carbon, an oxide alarm, fire extinguisher. Come on. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Mm. Um, oh, okay. The sink and the gas and the fridge underneath. You've got drive away on it. That's what it looked like before. That red with all the flowers on it. All oh, right. Um, and then I got solar panels on the roof. That's all. Awesome. So, yes. Yeah. Awesome. I do like the idea of like you know having a van so yeah. I can just go off and drive and you know go to like Scotland or Cornwall and you know it'll be oh, it's, I've been watching that okay. you know Paul Merton on it and his wife on, ch on Channel Five. Oh yeah, <laughs> they do like a camper van travel thing, travel log, and I've been watching that. I was like, oh, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's a friend of mine that sprayed it. He's a spray artist around Cambridge. Um, and I just wanted like a sunset theme with a woodland theme on it as well. So, um, but yeah, this is what you come up with. It's pretty decent. It looks really nice. Very nice. So yeah. That's cool, that. That is cool, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, Nico. Campervan. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's um, oh, £40, £42 a night on Airbnb. Yeah. That's pretty decent. That's not bad. Not bad at it's, all. Um, it's mm. being hired out next Thursday. They just go into a festival. So um, yeah. Oh, it's going to a festival. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's a nice little side hustle, that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the reason why we bought it because essentially, um, friends of ours were selling it, um, and uh, Laura shared it out on her Facebook. And uh, it's a time when we had pretty much um, funds from the redundancies that we went through. And just like, oh, that would be so cool to have, just to drive off and take Jack in it and, and go to the beach, go to the seaside, just park yeah. next to the beach. I said, well, yeah. okay, if we get yeah. it, if we get it, I'm hiring it out. It becomes, because yeah. I don't like buying things that then turn into a liability. It needs to be an asset. So if we're going to buy it, it needs to make us some money. So, um, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. We spend... I'm still waiting for Andy Peters to come and knock on my door saying I've won a motor <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting. <laughs> every, every time I put it on, you know, that competition, uh, I'm always entering. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. but it never knocks. No, it never knocks on my door. No. Someone's knocking at your door. Uh, yeah, I say so, so we spent... We spent probably about ten ten thousand on it in total, which is pretty good. That's buying yeah. a van and getting get things that sorted and back in, um, we're renting it though, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. the solar good panels investment. on top and the spray. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, I did I'm, have one. I'm gonna have to show it in a minute, guys. No, that's fine. Uh, I was just about to say one. I had one thing that I thought of we uh, could do. But it's we're going to do the challenge now. But I thought we well, could then. pull pull a small amount of our funds together to, to build a business separately, aside from our from our other bits and pieces. Like if we got like the five of us together, us three, Sophie and Claire, essentially put in ten pound a month aside to pull and investing that somehow. That's the idea that I had. Why would we a bit like an invest a bit like an investment club, but um have we got any ideas on investing in a particular thing? Or... No, I mean not, not Twitter not, at the moment. <laughs> not Twitter, no. Um no, it was just kind of let's just 
put into my head this morning, like a real small mm. amount just to stick somewhere. But now we're doing the challenge, so um, that's taken over. Yeah, the challenge is good. It's a good challenge. Yeah. Because it's, it's helpful for like, you know, like lots of people who are just starting out. Because I think, I think reselling, loads of people are doing it, but then loads of people know about it, but don't know, haven't got the confidence to start either. And I think it'll be yeah, a good idea good. to like promote, like, you can do it. Trust us. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. easier than you think. <laughs> Um, I've got got a question for you all. Yeah. Um, it'll only take a minute. <laughs> um, I've not come across this before. I asked somebody on Sunday uh, buy and pay on eBay, but when I come to do the label, the address is incorrect. Um, so for for example, obviously I can't see the proper address, but for example, she's put seventy coronation, but it's blank, so there's no road, street, close, blah blah. Right. Um, the postcode's on there. So when I've Google mapped it, it's coming up as street. But the house number is not a house. It's a dentist. There's a flat, 70A, um, but there's no house number 70. Number 70 is a dental practice. I've messaged you now twice. I've got to send it out today. Otherwise, I'm going to get a late default. Um, um, I've messaged you twice to confirm the address. Shall I just cancel it? Have you? Um, but I don't. I, I don't have, want to. Has she it. come back to you? No. I'd say no. I'd, I'd cancel it and say issue with buyer's address. Right, yeah, because okay. that is it. Does give you that option, doesn't it? Like issue yeah. with buyer's address. Yeah. And I, I've done it once before, and somebody for a very similar issue. Like there was a business, and it yeah, it was a very similar issue. And they contacted me, the buyer contacted me finally after like a week and said, why have you cancelled it? There's nothing wrong with my address. I said, well, actually there is. It's not recognising it. And it's like, you know, and he, and he went, oh, sorry, I haven't changed it, right? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so the the if they want the item, they'll rebuy it, basically. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, yeah. Okay. And, and, it, and it doesn't go against me cancelling it if I put the reason because there's a problem with the address. No, 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 it doesn't. Cool. Um, I don't, I'm, okay. I've never done it with the buyer's address, but I don't know if there's any like notes or note to buy you can put in there and say the postcode doesn't point to this as the correct mm. address or something like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Cool. All right. I think that's probably a good place to end the call. We've had an hour and a half. George has been on for almost an hour, which is pretty good. Um. All right. Same time next week. Yeah. With our, with our okay. is it half nine or is it ten o'clock? Uh, I I put it as half nine. Oh uh, right, I thought it was ten o'clock. Sorry. Right, I know I know the week because Sharon asked that same question as well. So I kind of because I got pick up Jack again this morning. He's having to stay and play at his new school this afternoon. So, um, mm. I put it as half nine. I mean, we could do ten half next nine. week. It's fine. What's, oh, what's make best? mind out. What's best? <laughs> Off nine, ten o'clock. Oh. But what, what, every time we decide, we've got to let the other guys know. Yeah. Half past nine. Half nine? Half nine? Half nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Well, nice to see you guys. We're there uh, <laughs> next, nice next week. Yep. Yes. See, see you ya. later. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.